Righto then. Well, I'm quite a fan of Arch Linux, and I'm also quite a fan of the Arch way of doing things. It really teaches you a lot about how your system works. Consequently, however, that also means that the barrier for entry to use Arch Linux is quite high. But thankfully, there's now an official easy installer for Arch Linux. Personally, I think it's a little bit unnecessary since there are several distributions that make Arch Linux easy already, but I've gone ahead and fired up a Arch Linux virtual machine. So we're gonna go ahead and try and use the official Arch installer. Now, this is actually my first time using it, so you'll see my first impressions live. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now on the Linux lounge. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube, links in the description. So indeed, as I said during the opening, here we are inside of a Arch Linux virtual machine. Now this is the newest ISO downloaded straight from the Arch website. Yes, the installer is bundled by default, but you do need to make sure that your Arch ISO is new enough to have it. Once you're in the Arch ISO, go ahead and type in Arch install, and then we'll see what the installation process is like. So there we go, we've got Arch install. First, it's asking us to select our keyboard layout so our keyboard layout should be GB or UK and that seems to have accepted that so next it's asking us for our region so I am in the UK so in theory I should be able to find Europe yeah no there it is United Kingdom so if we type that in and next it's asking us what disk we want to install to so that would be the bottom disk let's do that and next it's asking us what file system we want to use. Curiously, it would seem that ButterFS is the default, so that's quite interesting, but I'm going to use ext4 because it's what I'm used to. And I don't want to encrypt the disk because this is just a virtual machine. And our desired host name, let's set it to Linux Lounge Virtual Machine. And enter our root password, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Interestingly enough, you can actually leave root disabled. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but there you go. And then we need to do a username. So I'll put in Linux Lounge. And next we need a password. So I'm going to just set that as the same as the root password because this is just a virtual machine. Should this user be sudo? Yes. Enter a username to create an additional user. No, we want to skip that. And next it's asking us what desktop environment we want to install. So it would seem our options are, yeah, there aren't actually all that many options here. You've got Awesome, Desktop, Gnome, KDE, KDE Wayland, and Xorg. Now I assume that might just be because this installation script is fairly early days. So let's just go ahead and install Gnome because that's what I tend to use. And now it's asking us if we want to install any graphics drivers. So since this is a virtual machine, no, I don't, but usually I would go ahead and select the NVIDIA drivers, and it's pretty cool that you can do that right from the installer. So, write any additional packages to install. No, I don't want to do that. Select one network interface to continue. So, we're going to go ahead and use the Ethernet, which the virtual machine has. Select one network interface to configure. Leave blank to skip. Okay. Enter valid time zone, so we are Europe, London. It's strange that they don't give you a list, but all right, that's fine. And that's my chosen configuration, that seems about right. And then it's going ahead and installing it, it seems. So, so far, I've got to say, I'm actually really, really impressed. That's probably the quickest I've ever gone through a Linux installation process. And it seems simple enough that I don't think beginners would use this, obviously, but definitely people who are semi-familiar with Linux would use this, and it does seem to be really, really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and see what the finished result is. And there you go, our installation is complete, and it was really, really quick. Now, this was actually really, really quick and easy, and to be honest, I expect this video to be much shorter than I originally imagined, but to be honest, that's a good thing, because that was a really, really good, quick and easy installer. So let's go ahead and reboot into our finished system. So it should go ahead and reboot, and when it does, we should find ourselves in a finished Arch Linux install. So if we go back into our virtual machine here, let's see if it works. So it would seem for some reason our virtual machine does not actually want to boot from the hard disk after we went ahead and did that Arch install. So I'm going to have to go ahead and do a little bit of troubleshooting and see if it's a virtual machine issue or a Arch install issue. So I'll be back in a minute with the results of that. 
Well, sadly I've found out what our issue is. As it ends up, Arch install is actually not supported on BIOS machines. You need to have a machine with UEFI. Which is quite a shame because I know that a lot of people in the Linux community use machines that are BIOS only. But with that said, I'm still going to upload this video anyway, even though we didn't get to take a look at the finished install. Because I am really quite impressed with this. Now, although it's very early days, it does seem to be a way to lower the barrier for entry for installing Arch Linux. And I do think that at some point this is going to be a great alternative to doing things the Arch way. I do feel that it might be a little bit excessive given the fact we have a lot of distributions that make Arch Linux easy to use already. But I suppose if you want to use vanilla Arch, this is an option for you. So with that said, I gotta say I am quite impressed with what I've seen so far. And although I don't have a machine to show you everything think on right now at this very moment. At some point I will see if I can dig out a UEFI machine to go ahead and show you this on real hardware. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.